A blessing because I, you're going to hear uh, from different men and you're going to hear about some different subjects. So we have some devotions from uh, four different men today uh, for Father's Day. And uh, we're going to hear from John Schuster and Mike Meyer, Pastor Jeff, and myself. So we'll kind of go in succession. So one, whenever you're done and finished, the other one will just step right up and uh, begin their devotion. So it's a real blessing for me to be actually hear uh, some of the, these men and uh, they're uh, godly men and they've tried to serve the Lord all their lives and they have some different experiences and uh, I'm just so glad we can uh, listen to them and see what they have to say. So first up is John. Thank you. I'm not used to being up here. I am pleased, however, to be able to tell you uh, my, in a short amount of time, my, my trip as a father. Uh, and uh, I'll try and be as concise as I can be. Uh, I was introduced to Covenant by my wife. And in January of 1964, I met a woman at college. And that woman was Diane, my wife. And we were married right here at Covenant, Covenant in 1966. We have two daughters, born in 1970 and 1972. We have, uh, they gave us, a granddaughter, born in 2003, and two grandsons, born in 2008 and 2011. Now that's my fatherhood and my grandfatherhood, and is it wonderful? Is it wonderful? Uh, it gives me, it, it give, this gave me the joy of being a father and the joy of being a grandfather, along with, of course, obligations, things that you have to, to do along with that. I praise the Lord that I became a born-again Christian through the, the uh, preaching of John Drummond here in this church. And that was a long time ago, but what a wonderful change in my life that made. And it gave me the way to be a Christian father. It, it's uh, along with helping my wife Diane, my love Diane, raise two daughters and those two daughters and their children and they have wonderful families. Now, we, you don't always get exactly what you want but you work hard at it. And they uh, have, uh, attend church. They are good people. But it helps for me to have Christ in me, to have that background of what to say and what to do and how to work with them to make them good Christian people. I was a lifetime church attender, and, and I, I went to Sunday school, I went to probably three or four different churches, but not until I met Diane and came here to Covenant did I become a, a born-again Christian active in the church. And you're talking about way back when I was 23, and now I'm, never mind. <laughs> this gave me the support and the means, and it still does, to live by God's word, especially with the family. And the family knows that. And I need to, we need to keep 
telling them that we are Christian and the, and the kind of behavior that we want to see come from our family. And we do that, and they do. Praise the Lord, they do. Now, not everybody's perfect. Nobody's perfect except Jesus. Amen. But we deal with the good and let them know the good and we deal with the bad and try and deal with the bad. One of the good things I just want to let you know is my uh, son, my grandson is going on a missionary trip in uh, the beginning of uh, July uh, to the Dominican Republic and, and he's uh, 15 years old. So I'm really pleased with that. There's one of the good things. We won't talk about the bad things, but we deal with those. And they're, they're with, with the Lord with you, you can deal with that. And you can have good results with that. Now, uh, I probably should have had uh, Bible verses and other things, but that's really the story of my my life as a Christian. Uh, I could go on forever, of course, with the number of years that I've been a Christian and the number of incidences and the history of this church. This church has meant everything to us, to Diane and I. This church, uh, her, her folks was, uh, went to this church and Diane actually has more years in this church than I do, as I said. She was, she's been here since she was born. And so praise the Lord for sending Diane to me, for, for having us meet. And that's the way I became a Christian, to, to start coming to church with her, to start learning what it meant to be, as I said, I, I've always gone to church, but to know what you should get out of church, Jesus Christ and him being your savior and all of the things. And uh, it, it helped me to be active here in this church and I'm still active, I think. Uh, you, I might shake a little when, with my age, but uh, I'm still active. Now, I hope and I pray that the note that pastor gave me to speak today mentioned something about gray hair. <laughs> well, here it is. According to Proverbs 2029, gray hair is the splendor of the old and gray hair is a crown of splendor attained by a righteous life. That's 1631. So there's two verses. Now, does my gray hair, is that what gave me the righteousness? No. Uh, but it is a sign of my age, and I'm still a Christian, and I'm still uh, uh, trying to do what is right and trying to be what is righteous. So here is a sign of my righteousness. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, I thank you. Thank you that you have created the role of fatherhood, that you have created us, and that you have given us the way to be a good father, the example of you and the example through your word. And we just pray that uh, that will continue and that the importance of fatherhood and family is there. And Lord, we just pray that it would increase in the world today, that family would increase. Father, we thank you for this church and ask that you would continue to bless it and bless our family in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So thanks for letting me do this. Okay, <laughs> means a lot to me. Um, Pastor Jay gave me a, a verse to speak about. And Pam and I were driving down the road, and I said, you must have got that wrong. <laughs> it's backwards. My verse is, uh, grandchildren are the crown of the aged, and the glory of children is their fathers. And I said, that's got to be wrong. The glory for me is my children. You know? <clears throat> and I thought it was backwards. But the more you think about it, and you think about your life as you went along, and you look at the old pictures that you have, and you say, boy, those kids really looked up to me. Didn't matter what I did, didn't matter anything. You know, they look up to you, because you're their father. And you can let them down, you can let yourself down, but you're still their father. And I, certainly I've let them down, they let me down. And I don't have any grandchildren, that's my biggest regret right now. You know, <laughs> that's what I really want. But I don't have any yet. I still have hope, always have hope. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're still trying. Um, and since they're gonna be a crown for me, I'm assuming they're coming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's my assumption, <laughs> okay? <laughs> And then I went through all these pictures, and it's, the glory of children is their fathers. And there's one I really wanted, I couldn't find it. But my son was just so happy to be with me. You know, just be with me. It didn't matter anything else that was going on in the world. They were happy to be with me, both my sons. And they, they, it's almost hard to say the glory they gave me by loving me and wanting to be their son, me to be their father, and I wanted to be their father, and they were my sons. That will never change. Never. You can't, give, you can't substitute that for anything. There's nothing. You look at your sons. I don't have daughters. I'm going to assume that daughters get, are the same thing. There's no difference. They're your child, and they love you, just like Jesus loves you, just like God the Father loves you, and will never stop loving you, no matter what you do, no matter what you say, and they will feel the same, and your sons and daughters are the same way. They will always be loved by God till the end of time. You can't change that, and you don't want to. And I've always loved my children, just as much as my wife, almost. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Even to this day, my son called me last night for no reason. He just said, wanted to say hi, Dad. Down in Florida, he just wants to call and say hi and, and, and tell me he loved me. And my wife. I always think this is wrong because they're so important to me. It was so, what a blessing God gave me to be a father. There's nothing, nothing that's any better than that to me besides loving God. And he is the father. The father of all. The father of everything. And I feel, I don't know how you feel, but as long as you keep loving those children like God loves you, that things will work out all right. You know, they might not be perfect, and they're certainly not, and neither am I. Just like John said, neither am I. You know, <laughs> they'll always, but if you keep loving them, they'll love you back, and they'll love their Father in heaven, and you'll always be a good example to them because you did that. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is um, when God says, 
This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And I, that's how I feel about my kids. I have such a great time raising children. And I hope you can always look to that verse and say, this is my beloved son or daughter in whom I'm well pleased because they love you and you love them. Nothing's more important than that, than being loved and loving them. Anyway, thank you. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Hi. <laughs> no, if I should be insulted or not, because <laughs> I they see, didn't I'm say John. anything about hair <laughs> for me. So, why is that? What did you say? <laughs> What did he say? Thank you. But I have any. <laughs> what did he say? So Jay did ask me to speak about balance and the balancing act that uh, we have um, between our family, between church, um, and how we fit all and the work and how we fit all of these things together. And so we have this crazy balancing act, and it all centers around time really. And time, time is a really crazy thing. When, when you're young, that we're going to go on forever and that time just kind of doesn't really have any bearing on our lives. college age, we realize that distantly out there in the future, our time will come. But it's just so distant that, distant that it doesn't really, doesn't really bear on us much. And then if kids enter the picture, the meaning of time is completely and totally forever warped. That is until you're an empty nester, and then you have to figure out time all over again. It's just so crazy how time works that way. No matter how or where we find ourselves, time is just crazy the way that it functions. And it's hard to have any kind of a balance with work and family and church so it's important to establish that when I say church here, I'm not talking about your relationship with Christ. I'm talking about the time that you spend in serving the church. Those aren't the same thing. So how do we balance all of these things? And all of these things are important. So the guiding principle for me is that in all we do, we need to be redeeming the time. And when we have that in mind, it kind of changes our perspective on things. Balance implies that all of these things are equal, but they're not. They're not all equal. Uh, they're all necessary, but we should be prioritizing what those different things are. The Bible does not set out the clearest saying, this is number one, and this is number two, and this is three, and this is four. There's, it'd be easy. It'd be happen. We just follow the list. Okay, check, check, check. I'm good. Uh, so it doesn't do that except for giving us a clear number one. And after that, we kind of have to figure out those things on our own and how to balance those things. And it's easier when we have this idea of redeeming the time in mind. So I'm not really sure why I'm asked to speak because I'm not sure how I'm qualified because as I look at my life sometimes, I can't figure out how that balance played in because I know that there are times in my life when things weren't in the right priority. And so it's difficult, and maybe that's part of it. Why? Because all of us find ourselves there at different points in our lives. So I'm going to start with um, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And time is a gift from God. We can use that gift well, or we can use that gift foolishly. We, should, we can cash in that time using it in the wise ways that serve him and his purposes for our lives. So we start with first things first, and that's our relationship with Christ. That has to be above everything. I love my wife and my children dearly. I do. But first things first, and first in my life, has to be my relationship with Christ and what he's done. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. 
And so many times people focus on that last part of this, and these things shall be added to you. But really, first things first. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And that's as we have this balancing act of time where we should start. For me, looking at Scripture, I see the second thing with priority is my family. In Ephesians 5.25, it says, Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Whew. That speaks pretty highly. That's a pretty tall order. And it also, to me, speaks of the priority that my wife should have in my life. That's, that's pretty up there. So when I think of the time that I have and how to redeem it, it needs to be in part with her. And then it's from Psalm 127, verses 3 and 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Happy is the man whose quiver is full of them. What a joy, right? And this speaks to this idea of family. And as a father, we have a responsibility to tie all of that together. And from 1 Timothy 3, 4, one who rules his own house well, having his children in submission with all reverence. And this kind of speaks to me as fathers are, are to manage all of this. And that, that's a difficult thing. As both men before me have, have already mentioned, that some things are good, some things are bad. We don't, as much as we want to manage, we don't have full control. And we see things happening that I could step in. If only I could fix this. If only I could say, don't do this. You don't want to do this. And if only they would listen. All right? But that's not how it works. We manage the best that we can. And these passages, I think, demonstrate importance. The third thing I see having importance uh, in is serving the church. And this is works. James gives us some great wisdom in this area. In James chapter 2, verses 20 and 26. But what do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Our faith requires that we serve to keep it alive, to keep it fresh, and to keep it real. And so we have these demands on our time. And finally, there is this last one, this idea of work. The Bible tells us that there is a time for every purpose under heaven, sadly, even work. Now, sometimes our work is a joy to us, and some of you are blessed and privileged to have jobs that don't feel like that. Others of you have jobs that are just that. They are jobs. Proverbs 6, 6 and 8 is fairly clear. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which, having no captain or overseer or ruler, provides her supplies in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. Working provides the means to sustenance. That wonderful family that we've already mentioned as a priority needs to eat. And we are responsible in that way for providing it. So we have to balance all of these things together. And it's not always easy. And some of sacrifices that have to be made in our time. But we do those with the idea that our time is limited and we need to redeem. So my words to you then are that you redeem the time that you line up what you do and how you spend your time then with Scripture. And when you are in His Word and looking for priorities, you'll find them. You'll find them. So that's how I've interpreted them. That's how I've interpreted the priorities. There's no clear set list. Get in His Word. Find out what it says to you. Thank you, Pastor. I want to thank uh, John and Mike and Jeff so very much. Um, I, I chose these men, uh, not that others in the fellowship uh, can help uh, other, our fellow men, 
But I, I chose these men specifically for a reason. Uh, John I chose because I have really admired him. Uh, he has been an amazing servant. And it doesn't seem to matter what age he is, he just keeps on serving. And that's a great example to me. And so when I see uh, you know, his gray hair and uh, him continuing serving, it uh, doesn't matter if he's 75 or 77 or 80 or whatever it happens to be, John is just always serving in some capacity. And you know, that's a great example for fathers. He, he's a great example for fathers. And, and I really admire, I admire John, and I just wanted to thank him for his service and for being a great example. So, and I chose Mike because I know, like myself, he's had some struggle with his kids. And um, as a father, that's just something that we sometimes experience. Uh, and yet, he mentioned the one thing that has helped me uh, and he mentioned it several times that he just keeps loving his children. And, and that's a good thing, because when you have all these difficulties that sometimes happen uh, in raising children, you just keep loving children. Uh, do they fail? Do we fail? He was exactly right. Yes, they fail. Yes, we fail. But one thing that is a binder to all this is, as John mentioned, I mean, as Mike mentioned, is we love them. We, we just keep loving them. Sometimes they don't love us back, uh, but we just keep loving them. So thank you, Mike. I really appreciate your words. And, uh, and Jeff I chose because he's uh, kind of unique in that as a father, he has a full-time job as a teacher. He pastors our, our youth here, and, and he does a wonderful job. Just a wonderful, wonderful job. I don't know how many people have actually expressed to him how great a job he's done and how faithful he is. Uh, but I, I also admire Jeff, and I'm so grateful for him. But then also, he's a father, and he's got two great kids. And, and I see them, and they serve here, uh, and that's a testimony to, to him. And so I thought, well, these, these three men are good fathers and are good, uh, their examples and what they've gone through and what they are doing as far as, uh, you know, trying to balance time between being a husband and a father and a teacher and a pastor. Uh, that's a lot. That's a great deal for Jeff to do. And, and he does it wonderfully. And, and I'm just so grateful for him. And I'm grateful for Mike and all the hard work that he has done. Uh, he continues just to, he's got this terrible, terrible job to me where he, he has to travel everywhere to supply you know, what he needs for his family, and he's done it. And he still comes, and he still has a smile on his face, and I'm grateful for him. And once again, I'm just so grateful for, for John and his wonderful example to us all. Now, I have a kind of a different uh, subject that I chose for myself. Uh, but before that, I just want to mention uh, I, the, uh, the uh, men's prayer breakfast has been a blessing to, to many of our men. And I understand that uh, Steve had a great treat for everybody yesterday, that everybody enjoyed it. And sometimes I do not attend them, not because I don't want to, but because, well, if I come, then I bring Lisa with me because we have our practice afterwards and she has to hang around for an hour. So she has to get up when I get up. She has to travel with me. She has to sit here and wait for me. And sometimes, um, as a father, sometimes you just sacrifice what you might want to do so that you can just bless your wife. So sometimes I'm not at a, uh, the men's prayer breakfast, not because I don't want to be, but because sometimes I just decided, well, I'm not going to have Lisa uh, get up early and uh, wait, wait for us to get, actually get done before we go to our one accord practice. So, you know, I'm so grateful for the men's prayer breakfast and I'm grateful that uh, they enjoy it. And uh, I'm grateful that Steve has provided a treat for them that everybody seemed to be raving about. And I'm sorry I missed that one. It's so good. Uh, but I, uh, I'm grateful for all of our men. We have some great, great men here. Now, uh, what I have for you today is, is a couple different things. 
There was a new mother who was trying to uh, clear the, clean the house, and, and, and he asked her husband to actually, uh, who was doing some busy work around and doing a project, to actually take their fussy eighth-month-old baby and stroll uh, in the carriage around uh, the block for a while. Uh, anybody ever have a fussy child? Has a mom ever tried to do anything, you know, during this fussiness? And uh, just simply ask dad, could you, could you take a little while so I could actually do something? And well, like most men, he said, all right. <laughs> and so he re reluctantly took the child and he uh, wa washed his hands, grabbed the carriage, and he began walking around the block with their baby. All of a sudden, he hears, honey, honey. The mom is shouting from the second floor story window. And he, uh, he yells back, she's fine, she's fine. Um, we'll be back in, in, in an hour or so. So off he goes. And he's going around the block, and he's going around the block, and he's going around the block. And the, the second or third time, he hears, honey, honey. Well, after the fourth trip around the block, the husband again heard her, his, uh, his wife calling. And uh, she's there again uh, from the second story window. And he yells back very affectionately, what? <laughs> she's all right. And uh, is there anything wrong? No, no, replied the wife. But you've been walking Susie's doll around for the last half hour. It's really time you let the baby have a turn. <laughs> now, I say this because we really do need to pray for dads. And I also want to say this because, you know, one thing that's so helpful, uh, being a father, is trying to have a sense of humor. Add a sense of humor into the mix of everything. You know, there's, there's pressures that dads have that are kind of unique to them. Uh, but sometimes we just need to make light of things. Proverbs 17.22 says, A merry heart does good like medicine. And I don't know about you, but I need some medicine. It says, but a broken spirit dries the bones. And, uh, you know, if you don't laugh about some of the, if you don't laugh at yourself, if you don't laugh at some of the circumstances that you find yourself in, you know, you're going to have some really dry bones. Right? You're going to have some really dry bones. Now, here's another subject. A man was at home doing some cleaning with a telephone rang, and they still had a landline. Anybody still remember them? Yeah. They still had a landline that they never really kept given up. But in going to answer the phone, the wife tripped on the uh, scatter rug and grabbing for something to hold on to, seized the telephone table, and it fell over with a crash, jarring the receiver off the hook, and as it fell, it hit the family dog, who leaped up, howling and barking. The woman's three-year-old uh, uh, old son, startled by the noise, broke into a loud scream. And the man, uh, I mean, and the, the mom mumbled some colorful words before she picked up the receiver just in time to hear the husband's voice on the other end say, Nobody said hello but I'm positive I've got the right number. <laughs> and for that father who thinks that he might have some insanity in his household, we need to pray for him as well because you probably do. But you know, you just have to be there. You just have to be there. You just don't know sometimes what's going on. And so there are times where you just have to be patient. And that was one of my downfalls a lot. I was never, ever really a very patient person. 
We did have some humor in our home, but I never was a very patient person. But you know, there are times where, because of the difficulties and the hardships and the things that are just going on that you may not even be totally aware of, you just need to be patient. So have some humor, dads, right? And, and have some patience, dad. Do we have any fathers or dads uh, that have actually thought there's a little insanity in their home? Sure, sure. So you're going to have to be patient with it all, right? Now here's another little subject. A small boy was quizzing his father and asked, Is it true that the stork brings babies? Yes, son, answered the father. And Christmas presents come from Santa Claus? That's right, son. And the Lord gives us our daily bread? Right again, son. Then, Daddy, why do we need you? We need some sense of humor, we need some patience, and we need to know that you really are of value. Even though sometimes those in the family don't think too much of you, but you really are important. So for those dads who think that they just aren't needed or of value, or really respected as they should be, know that you really are of value. You really are important, even though there are times where there's members of the family may think you're not. Another subject. Ann Lander writes, my father, when I was four years old, could do anything. When I was five, he could do a whole lot. And when I was six, my dad was smarter than your dad. When I was eight, my dad didn't know exactly everything. And when I was 10, I learned that my dad grew up when things were sure different. When I was 12, oh, my dad didn't know, didn't know about that. And when I was 14, it was, well, don't pay attention to my dad. He's so old fashioned. When I was 18, I can't wait to be away from him. When I was 21, he was hopeless. When I was 25, Dad knows about that. Let me give him a call. When I was 30, I could call Dad and ask him what he thought. When I was 40, I wasn't going to do anything until I talked to my dad. When I was 50, I'd give anything if dad were now here that I could talk to him. And you know, that's how it goes. Different age brackets, kids see us differently. But you know, as you get older, they realize that maybe you do have some wisdom. And there's some wisdom that you can actually share your children. So here's some, some things that I think that are kind of helpful for dads. I think we could learn from John, have a good example. We could learn from Mike, love your children. We can learn from Jeff, get the balance. And here's what I'm trying to share with you. Have some humor, be patient, you are valuable, and there is wisdom from you that your family and your children need. They may not realize it at certain age brackets, but you have some wisdom to share. So we want to thank the Lord for the wisdom that God has given to our dads that they have given to us. So for today, let's pray that dads keep a sense of humor, that dads realize that their home gets a little insane at times, and that they become a source of stability, encouragement, understanding, as well as patience. And let's also pray that dads know that they are needed, 
and have a tremendous, tremendous value in the family, and that they are going to be a very essential source of wisdom that your family and your children need. So dad, grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ that you may actually provide some wisdom for your family. So these are some things for our dads today. So let's, uh, let's pray for them and we'll head on home and hopefully dads will have a great day. My father, thank you so very much for this time that you've given to us. Thank you for our dads and our fathers that you, whether they're with us now or whether they're home with the Lord or, or whatever it might be that you've provided to us, we're just so grateful. And we do want to pray for our men today that you'll continue to bless and help and encourage them. And Lord, there's certain things that hopefully has been said today that they can just take home and re be reminded of and benefit by. And I do want to pray that you just continue to protect them. We have an evil one, an enemy, who has so attacked men and so attacked the family uh, that, the, uh, that men are also great defenders in, in this day and age. They are protectors. They're not only providers, they're protectors. They're a great influence. And I do want to pray that you might help our men uh, in these, uh, this environment that we find ourselves in, that they will uh, be men and they'll be the kind of men that God can use to influence their families. Through Jesus, we give you thanks and we pray. Amen.